Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about compound propositions now. And what this is all about, it's about taking uh, propositions, different propositions, and putting them together to make a new proposition, uh, a new statement. Okay, so it's like taking a statement, combining it to make a new one. And there's for this video, there's three key um, statements you need to remember. Sorry, three key bits of notation you need to remember. And how their truth tables and that sort of work and I'll talk to you a little bit about that now okay so the main words we're going to use in this clip are the words and and the word or so we're going to use we're going to use these two words to combine statements together right so bear with me I'm going to go through each one now now the first one is something called a conjunction Okay, and this is to do with the word and, and the symbol for it is like this upside down triangle. It's like drawing a capital A, but without the line in the middle like that. Okay, actually, it should probably be a bit smaller than that. So um, it's like like an A, but without the line in the middle. Now, let me just make up some propositions first of all, some statements, right? So let's say P is the statement it is raining. Okay. And Q say Q is the statement oops I have an umbrella. Now both of these statements could be true or false, it doesn't really matter, we don't really care about that. But we're going to combine them to make a new statement. And the one I want to make is this, P, that symbol, Q. Now how you read it, sorry, how you say it, is P and Q. Okay, so this means and, right? So P and Q. Now how you write it as a sentence is this. Well. P is a proposition, it is raining. Q is a proposition, it is an umbrella. And the ideal situation would be, it is raining and, so there's a word and, I'm going to highlight in bold, and I have an umbrella. Okay, so that is a really, really easy thing to do, right? It's just bunging these two things together sticking the word and in the middle, right? But the thing is that you can go into a bit more detail. You could do something like this. You could have uh, something like this. P and not Q. Okay, now how would you write that as a sentence? It could be, it, well it's simple. It's it is raining. Oops. I'm going to do that. Raining. And I do not have an umbrella. I'm going to really struggle writing this clearly, but okay, so there you go. So that's just basically see, see that, and it means the word and. So this is the first statement, and this bit is the second statement with the word and in the middle. Now, a simple, really, really simple, easy one mark question or two, like, I don't know, two mark question would be something like they write down P, what it is, and they write down Q, what it is, and they say write this as a sentence. Okay, and a simple, easy one mark question, you would literally write that down as a sentence, and it would be the opposite of that, so something like, it, you know, well, just using our examples, it is not raining and I don't have an umbrella. So that would be it. Simple, really, really easy more mark question. Now, I want to look at the um, truth table behind this. What I mean by truth table is, now, it is raining, I have an umbrella, they could be true or false or a mixture of the two. And I want to look at all the different combinations and look at the the truth values behind them, okay? So, 
And this could apply to anything really, not just about the two propositions I made earlier, but let's say P Q like this. And I want to look at the values of P and Q. Okay? So this is what we call the truth table, because in these first two columns, I'm gonna I'm going to write down all the different combinations that P and Q could be. Now First of all, they could both be true. So, for example, it could be raining, and uh, sorry, and um, I could have an umbrella. They could both be true. Or let's say it could rain, but I don't have an umbrella. Or let's say it's not raining, but I do have an umbrella. So they're both one's false, the other's true. Or they're both false. Okay, these are the these are the scenarios they can have, these four statements, they could both be true. The first one could be true, the other one could be false, the first one could be false, the second one could be true, or they could both be false. Okay. There are no other scenarios. Okay. Th this is basically it, and most, most questions involving a truth table have these two as their first, first columns, and usually they're done for you, so these two statements are th these two columns are normally filled in for you, but it's good to remember it. Now, what would the truth values be for this? So this is P and Q, right? P and Q. Now, first of all, in this first row, they're both true. So true and true. So that means this must be true. Okay. Now, what's the scenario here then for this row? Well, the first one's true. And the second one's false, but is P and Q true? Well, no. Okay, so they're false. They're not the same. They're not both true. What about this row? First one's false. The second one's true. Again, that's got to be. That's going to be false. Okay. And so they're they're not both true. So yeah, this outcome is going to be false here. And what about the last one? Well, that's clearly false because they're both false. So this is this is the scenario for P and Q. Okay, it's only true if each one is true. Okay, otherwise it's false. So if either one of those is false, then this statement's false. Okay, but if they're both true, like in this first row then the outcome is true. Okay? But if either one of those is false, then the answer is false. Or if both of them are false. Okay, so remember that if you've got true and true, then the answer is the and statement gives you a true result here. Okay? Right, that's the conjunction then. that's the truth table for a conjunction. Okay, now let's look at um, the next one. And this is called a this junction okay and this is to do with the word or and the symbol for it is that okay so if I just recap in the corner and was uh, oops now I've got it the wrong way around haven't I and well, now I've got this messed up completely whoops or is this way. Okay, and was that, wasn't it? So and was this and this is or. Okay? So here's a statement. P or Q. P or Q. Okay? So we say it's P or Q. Now let's make up some propositions again. Let's say P is a statement I will play football okay q is a proposition i will play cricket okay now um so what would be this as a statement p or q or p the v symbol in q it will be, I will play, so let's just write it quickly, I will play football, 
I'm not going to bother writing the rest. Or I will play cricket. I'm just writing this really quickly. But where you see this symbol here, it means the word or. So you just bung it between the two propositions. So this or that. Okay. Now you could have a combination of things. So for example, you could have not p or hang on whoops or q so this could be something like i will not play football or i play cricket okay or you can have not p or oops keep doing that or not q so i will not play f football or, or i will not play cricket or a mixture of the two. So a simple one mark question or two mark question would be writing something like this as a sentence. And you need to remember that this means or. Okay? Right now here's where the funny thing now we've got to look at the truth tables behind this, okay? Now um let's let's go through the basics again. So P Q and you've got P or Q. Okay, right now, let's just fill in the two columns because they're always the same. They could both be true. They could both. One of them could be true. The second one could be false. First one could be false. The second one could be true, or they could both be false. Okay. Now, P or Q. It kind of makes sense, right? Because it's like saying to you. Um, this could be true or the other one could be true. So true and true, that's got to be true. Okay? So this one here, the first one's true, the second one's false. So P or Q, either one could be true. Well, if either one's true, then this is true. And again, here, if either one's true, this one's true. And the last one is, well, they're both false, so that's got to be false. Now, if you have a look, the thing to remember is if they're both false, then P or Q is false. Okay? So the only time you get a false statement is if they're both false. So this is like saying I will not play football or I will not play cricket, then P or Q me is going to be false here as well. Okay? So that's the thing to remember. So the truth table looks like this. The only time it's ever false is if they're if each individual proposition is false. Okay? So that's the thing to look for for this. Okay, the word or, and this is the truth table. So remember that truth table. You see this. If the first one's false, and the second one's false, then the outcome's false. And in any scenario, if either one's true, then the outcome's oops, the outcome is true. Okay, so remember that. Okay, now the last one. This is kind of where it gets a little bit confusing. It's called an exclusive this junction. Okay, an exclusive disjunction. And the symbol for it is this. It's the V with a little line underneath it. Now, I'll let me write it here first. Okay, P in this symbol and Q. And literally what it means is P or Q, but not both. So see the P or Q but not both. Okay. So let's just look at the truth table behind this. P Q P or Q but not both. Okay. Now let's look at the true values. It'll be the same as before. True, 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 false, false, true. If you can remember it in this order, it'll be better. False, false. Okay, and let's fill it in. Now, y you just need to remember this, really. Okay, so, um, all right, let's go through it then. So, if they're both true, okay, it needs to be in me. Now, look at this. It's P or Q, but not both of them. So here they're both true. So this has to be false, because it, this this scenario here, but not both. Okay, they're both true here. Now here we've got true and a false, so that's got to be true. 
Here we've got a false and a true, so that's got to be true. Here they're both false, so that's false. Okay, so now look at this. The way to remember this one is that only one of them can be true for the outcome to be true. Okay, so only one of them is true here, so the outcome is true there. If they're both identical to each other, then the outcome's false. Okay, the outcome's false there. So remember that. Okay, if they're if they're the same thing, then it's false. If one of them is the opposite, then it's true. Okay, so remember that scenario. So, P O Q. So you've got the three things to remember from this. Okay, you've got the and, you've got the or, or got the exclusive distinction, which means this or that, but not both. Okay, now they're they're the building box building blocks for compound propositions. So we're going to add to this, so we're going to do some more and more complicated truth tables and statements and so on. So, you know, try and commit these to memory. Okay, so I'm going to stop it there.